scandalous. It's Kristen, and today we are talking about Netflix's new series, Bridgerton. Based on the Julia Quinn best-selling novels, Bridgerton follows the competitive world of Regency London High Society, and follows close-knit siblings of the powerful Bridgerton family as they attempt to find love and just figure out their lives. Consider subscribing if you like my videos, and drop down in the comments and let me know your thoughts on Bridgerton. Is this a project you're excited for? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I also want to mention I did get a chance to interview the Bridgerton cast at the Netflix Junket, so I will leave a link right here to my interviews. Now, from what I have heard, Bridgerton, the book series, has a lot of fans, and so I'm sure that they are hoping for a really great adaptation of this series. Period pieces are not something that I'm very familiar with, I don't watch a lot of them, but I was really invested in this one. It looks like they're following the first book in the Bridgerton series, and then there's all these other stories that interweave with the other characters that they kind of hint at, and that they set up that I'm sure that we'll get down the line if we get more seasons. Uh, but this one in particular is following the eldest Bridgerton daughter, Daphne, and her going out into high society and trying to find love, and if she finds a match that's going to be really helpful for the rest of her family moving forward when it comes to, you know, finding their place in society. This series has one of my favorite kind of relationship tropes, which is people who are strangers and then they don't like each other and then they become friends and then they fall in love. And I think that they actually a really great job with the relationship that we're following of Daphne and Simon and showing that progression. You know, it's not instantaneous. This is not an insta-lust type of story. You know, we're really seeing them grow together. At times it can be really frustrating because the two of them really need to learn the meaning of communication, but I think it kind of shows a realistic sort of depiction of like how difficult relationships can be and how you sort of have to make that decision to be like we want to be in this together. What I think is really cool about this story is that you know we're following this kind of period piece Regency era but we also are tying it together with more modern twists. They took modern songs from artists like Ariana Grande and Billie Eilish but then gave it like an orchestra type of vibe and I think it just makes you kind of get into the heads of these characters even more because it has that modern relatability to it. I also think that the set design and the costumes were so on point. It was so beautiful. Like, it really transported you into this world. You know, you're hearing these, like, orchestra versions of, like, Thank You, Next, and you're watching these people come in in these beautiful gowns and this hair and in these gorgeous ballrooms, and you're just like, oh, yes, like, this is, this is it. Like, I want to live in this. And then, of course, we're hearing about this character, Lady Whistledown, who is kind of sharing the gossip of this high society in these news pamphlets and to me I just kept thinking this is like a period piece meets Gossip Girl. There's this character Anthony Bridgerton who's the eldest brother and he thinks he knows what he's doing but he really doesn't especially when it comes to running the household and there was this really great scene that showed that even though like there's these men who think that they run the show like Anthony that the women are really the ones running everything with the gossip of the town you know they just they say one thing it passes on to someone it passes on and they can make really big change just from that and I thought that was a really fun moment just to show how powerful these women really are, even though it might not seem like it. It kind of reminded me of that saying where like, yeah, the man might be the head, but the woman is the neck kind of choosing where it goes, you know, that's the one that's really in charge. So I thought that was a really cool moment. I think my favorite character was probably Penelope Featherington, played by Nicola Coughlin, who you might know from Derry Girls. I really loved her character because I felt like she was sort of like the everyman, like she was very relatable. She kept getting kind of caught in these situations that she wanted to do the right thing, but it came at the cost of someone else. She wanted to find love, but she was also on the outside looking in. And I just think that Nicola did such a great job with the character and really bringing her to life. They also tackle a lot of different topics, you know, people that are seeking a revenge, people that are looking for love, characters that want to be independent and not follow that, you know, typical, this is what you have to do in high society. So it was really interesting to see all the different, like, perspectives we had going on in this world. On the other side of things, though, a couple of criticisms. I will say there was a lot of characters, and at times it got a little bit overwhelming to kind of follow what was going on. You know, a lot of the Bridgerton brothers looked so similar that I'm like, wait, which guy was that? And also, there's eight siblings, but they only really focused on five of them. Two were just very young, so they, like, didn't really show them at all. And then one was at, like, some kind of piano camp or something, and she didn't even come back for, like, some big events that I was kind of like, that doesn't really make any sense. Um, so they didn't really focus on those characters, and they kind of focused on more of the older Bridgerton kids. It just felt like there's a lot of people. Sometimes they would make these decisions, especially Simon, that seemed very 
stubborn and immature for no reason. Maybe that's just how the characters are, uh, but it was frustrating, you know, <laughs> to follow that and be like, come on, let it go, let it go. Something that I think was missing a bit from the show was diving deeper into the ideas of race. I think it's really cool that our main leading man is a black man, which we don't necessarily see in period pieces like this, um, so I thought that was really awesome. I just think that they could have done more, including more people of color. You know, we did have um, the queen was a woman of color, but they didn't really have her as much a part of it as I thought she would be. And they do hint at the fact that the king marrying the queen made a big change in terms of like race and hierarchy and things like that. Like apparently their societies were divided by race at first until the king married the queen. And I just wish that they showed us that more. It felt like a, like a one-off line to throw in there. Um, and I would have loved to see just like them tackle that idea a bit more. But after watching Bridgerton, it's very dramatic. It's a bit soapy. Um, it kind of feels like a period piece gossip girl. But I had fun. And I would love to see where they go next in a season two and, you know, maybe even check out the books and see how it compares because I think that would be really interesting. The music was excellent. The production was beautiful. The costumes were gorgeous. I think that they introduced a lot of really interesting concepts and, you know, while there was some stress, at least on my end, in terms of watching some of these characters and the choices that they made, you kind of get a little bit of everything. There's a mystery, there's a scandal, there's romance, there's, there's something for everyone. If you like this one, you can check out more of my Netflix reviews right over here and I will catch you in my next video. See ya!